we're going to show you all the accessories you need to clean and maintain your airbrush. <laughs> Now that you've taken that big first step and picked you up a nice airbrush, well, it's time to think about how you're going to clean it and also maintain it. And Spray Gunner sent us this, these goodies here. And there's one other item that I'm going to show you on their website that I think is almost a must have for the miniature painting hobby that will really help you get the most out of your airbrush. So first and foremost, let's, <laughs> let's jump over to their site so I can show you that item. Spraygunner.com is a great place to start if you're looking for an airbrush, you want to scoop up some accessories, uh, whatever it is to maintain your airbrush. They, of course, are on Amazon, but yo, you know, help them out. Make sure you check them out over on the website so they don't have to pay Amazon. We've got to help out small businesses that are helping out our hobby here. Now, this particular item sometimes is called a Mac valve or manual control, uh, I think, manual air control valve. We'll go with that is it, it's, they're hard to find good ones. Now, Harder and Steamback have this one. It actually works. I, I haven't, I don't own this right now. <laughs> I don't have one here. I, I really wanted one of these, so that's why I'm showing you this first. But what it is, it's just a quick release, one eighth inch valve, or one eighth inch hose up here, and we'll show you this here in a second, because most of their airbrushes always come with the fitting right here, so you don't have to worry about that. And here's the valve right on the side. This gives you more control more precise control instead of having to leave it lean over and mess with your air compressor and things like that it just you know you might bump something and when you're working you know how it is right so this thing's pretty dope uh, it's 24 dollars. it's a high quality one it works really really well uh, i have a grex one currently you can use the grex one i don't know if spray gunner sells it but i definitely recommend everything anything and everything harder steam back uh, especially their airbrushes, I think they are pretty much amazing quality right there. And I know what you're thinking, you're like, hey, you know, last time I saw your airbrush videos, you're using uh, Iwata, the Eclipse, which was great, and I used that for a number of years, but I know in my heart of hearts, I would have definitely been a better miniature painting, hobbyist, enthusiast, artist, whatever you want to call it, if I had one of these uh, Ultras from Harden Steinbeck, actually the uh, Cre uh, the Creos airbrush as well is pretty good because it actually has this valve right down on here. But here's what I'm talking about. This is a GMAC valve, so you can regulate the pressure. I've got the airbrush set at about 30 PSI. So here's here's a nice big blast right there. And then just super easy. Hey, look, I'm still on my table. I'm just ad adjusting it down all the way, pulling it back up. I have a nice watery mix here, which is pretty good for working with um, things that are going to be really small i'm going to get in there and really get some of course it's absorbing in the paper but you kind of get the idea there this is a really small point to point to line right there and that's going to work out great so it really helps to have this here so if you have to go full bore or you have to tighten it back you have that control at your fingertips and probably the best part right here quick release all the hardened steam backs come with these already, so you just need the other piece of hardware to put on your air hose. Another piece of gear that's really good to pick up is perhaps an additional water trap. Now, if you have a regulator on your compressor, it probably has a water trap already in it. But if you're having problems with water and particulates getting through your line, getting up into, into your work, well, this might be something for you right here. It's just a little mini filter. I think the no-name brand ones are like six bucks or something, maybe nine, I forget exactly. And it just, it literally just hooks right in, in line with all of this right here. So you, it would just kind of substitute out, go in wherever you wanted it. You could have it here or you could have it right here, whichever it totally works. And then you just hit this right here and it'll release the air. And you can see when there's a bunch of junk in there that you need uh, to go ahead and empty out and that just unscrews right here and you can get like a uh, fine grit or no lint paper towel or q-tip well probably don't use a q-tip but just something that's not going to leave any more particulate in here when you clean it uh, and that way you know you keep it kind of pure and it's got a nice o-ring right in there and that well, as i explode it out of my hands <laughs> and that is a great little solution if you're having a water and things getting into your airbrush that you don't quite need. Now, I do wanna caveat something real quick for you. This is a braided cord. This is great for tanked compressors. If you don't have a tanked compressor, you can actually use a 
coiled, uh, you know, kind of like you see the air hoses on people that change your tires. Those are like corded or, or coiled cords is what they call them. Those are great because they're actually designed to kind of mitigate the pulsating of the compressor kicking on because it has no tank. It also kind of works as a, uh, a cooling coil for the air coming up through it that's going to push out so it doesn't get those water problems getting up into your airbrush. So if you have a piston compressor or a pistonless compressor that is giving you those kind of issues and it doesn't have an air tank, try the corded cable or the coiled cable because those are actually designed for those type of um, or for those type of compressors. Last resort, you could pick one of these up, but either way, if you just want to be sure and you don't want anything going through your lines, this is actually probably a good idea for you. Now, a great little combo kit from Spray Gunner is this airbrush cleaning kit. Uh, this is also called, it's made by Mac, but it's called Ac One. And it's just a, it's basically a plastic bottle, squirt bottle with, they call this a gooseneck kind of um, neck right here for getting up into spraying your airbrush. You're probably like, I don't understand how does this work? Well, we're gonna show you because my airbrush happens to have paint in it. So we're gonna clean it out and show you exactly how to clean your airbrush here in a second. But what also comes in this is a whole bunch of other cleaning products as well. Now, some of these you may need for your particular um, situation out there and some of them you may not. So we've laid the rest of the contents out as you can see here. And besides, of course, the wash bottle, the gooseneck wash bottle, this is what you get right here. And the, all of these instruments are both good and bad for your airbrush. Bad as, it, as in you can actually do harm to your airbrush if you misuse these cleaning tools. And that's a very important thing to remember. You can't just get in here and go willy nilly and just go full bore doing things to your airbrush because chances are you will actually hurt your airbrush. But I'm gonna give you tips on how to not mess up your airbrush, but also some things that you need to be aware of. So first off, you've got this keychain set of uh, different brushes here. Now, generally, a lot of people like to use these on the inside of their airbrush. For the most part, that's not what they're supposed to be used for. This is for working on the outside and working on the exterior parts like in the back of the airbrush or something like that or inside air passageways. It's not really for where you know your critical elements of uh, paint and also you know fluid and, and things are going to be but there's also something that we're going to show you right here see where the metal back here is folded and twisted this is jagged and you do not under any circumstances want this contacting the inside of your airbrush because it's going to scrape off either the chrome or the nickel plating depending on what kind of airbrush you have or even the aluminum uh, depending, you know, if you have the AL version from Harden Steinbach. So just kind of keep that in mind right there. This brush is awesome. This is a plastic bristle, very workhorsey type brush right here. And eventually I've had these, I've had many of these over the years, this very similar type brush. And as you can see right here, this is what it'll eventually look like <laughs> from years of use. So you do need to buy these kits and upgrade them pretty regularly. Uh, as a matter of fact, this is a brand new bottle, of course. This bottle right here is only about two years old. <laughs> so imagine what the inside of your airbrush can look like if you don't clean all that those areas that's getting water. And if you have an inferior type of airbrush that doesn't have the right coatings and can't take that weathering of constant water and things in all of the liquids and air if it's not filtered, you know, through your regulators and things, what you're actually putting in your airbrush. All right, two things down, lots more to go. This is just, you probably recognize this as a sculpting tool or perhaps as a dental pick. What this does is actually help you get dried, chunks of dried paint out of critical areas. Again, be very careful because you can scrape the interior coats of your airbrush, but let me tell you what, having one of these when you need it is very good because then you're not like scrambling for things like exacto blades and pins and rods and just stuff you a uh, paper clips that you have no business sticking into airbrush at least you have a better chance of not destroying your airbrush or harming it when you have more control from a tool that's designed for control right here these are actually tip cleaners for your nozzle areas and things uh, the smaller type areas now they're a specific gauge and stuff uh, right here. So you want to always start smaller than than you think you need when you're using these because the problem is that you can blow out some of your needle 
uh, caps and things on the in uh, on the inside of this if you you know if you just shove it through and it's too big you're gonna actually destroy your airbus you have to buy a replacement part and those are the parts that are most expensive this one is basically the same brush as these it's just super long so you can get down into your airbrush itself if you really need to maybe not necessarily for the miniatures hobby although you know it would be super helpful to kind of get down through here if you've got a lot of gunk and, and junk kind of in there but for the most part i don't think you'll be using this particular one a whole lot but i might be wrong these white uh, bristle ones are what you're going to be using on the inside on your critical areas so to speak and while this area right here is jagged so you don't want to smash it into anything these are looped at the end so you can be a little bit more liberal with these because it's not going to smash into um, the critical areas and we're going to show you some uses for this now these aren't a specific uh, diameter they're not de designed to go with any one thing but these can be super helpful and they are a little bit um, lesser coarseness of a brush right here and then these last two are just black bristled they're very rough and coarse uh, they're designed not for the interior they're for like uh, your caps your air passages your uh, nozzles and things that aren't super mission critical and that you can kind of get in and work out the particulates and just kind of work the outside of perhaps your airbrush itself you don't want to really be using these super coarse ones on the inside they're super coarse and not as fine as these where you can use these on a little bit better area so there's your basic cleaning kit in a nutshell pretty much every tool you're going to need to ever clean your airbrush should the need arise which it does from time to time but a properly maintained airbrush for the most part should not give you these kind of issues but you still need to do it every once in a while regardless and last but so certainly not least on the brush side of things are these blue red cleaning brush two-piece sets they're like a dollar but totally worth it if you really want to get in and not have to ever worry about getting on the inside of your needles and your uh, air passages and things like that the top right here is twisted so you don't have to worry super a whole lot about it scraping against the insides and messing up your airbrush but that being said you know you don't want to put up a whole bunch of force on it either for a couple of bucks they're kind of like an instant add to cart right there just because again you might not need them all the time but that one time you're gonna need them and you're gonna fumble around for the wrong tool and mess around and probably do more damage to your airbrush than if you had spent the dollar or two to pick up these bad boys and just have them in case the one thing that every airbrush artist starting out probably needs is a cleaning pot and they have a no-name brand version of this from spray gunner i think it is about 12 or 13 bucks which is probably about eight bucks less than everybody else and to be honest who, who cares it's all pretty much designed the same anyways uh, simple assembly you just put the airbrush holder right on here and for the most part you're good to go now just a quick idea like hey what is that well it's actually a pretty neat little design here you've got where your air is going to actually come out of here there's some wadding here a little bit of kind of like a faux filter but don't think that that's going to protect you from solvents or cleaners or anything like that you should not be using that abrasive crap you should not be using ammonia in your airbrush come on people do you want to breathe in ammonia even if you're atomizing ammonia what are you doing i know a lot of folks out there say it's a great idea but let me tell you what uh, exposing yourself to chemicals like that is never a good idea in my book and i just don't see I just don't see the benefits from it but that's just my personal high horse right there now this thing is it's pretty deep i don't know actually how much water it holds not that it super matters but for the most part it's got a lot of space in here you're going to always keep a little bit of water in here and while you need this because we're going to jump to the live demo and show you is so while you're actually airbrushing you have a place to just kind of blow out your airbrush in between cleaning but also a place just to kind of put some water uh if you don't have you know like a airbrush air filter trap or something you know those are extra a couple hundred dollars depending on which one you get not everybody can afford that right off the bat so this is a great you know under twenty dollar kind of solution that also holds your airbrush uh, you know i just think it i just think it's a it's a good thing all the way around so i'm going to show you how starting out basically how to clean your airbrush from the point of hey i've been using it now i need to clean this thing how do i do it 
So when I'm using these cleaning pots, I like to keep the lid barely on. It's just kind of clamped on at that first rung, but any pressure will definitely knock this over and spill it. So, you know, you gotta be careful there, but it gives you a quick, easy access to get in here, but also gives you nice, uh, solid structure to actually put your airbrush into when you need to quick park it somewhere, just like that, right? Of course, the torque on here, because it isn't at the edge of my desk, is pulling it away. So let's just pretend, let's play pretend, there we go. So it's on the edge of my airbrush station, and boom, there we go. Obviously, be careful that you don't knock it off your table when you're using it. Now, when you're doing color changes and you're spraying stuff into here, that's all great. It's gonna back flush into here. But say you are ready to clean out your airbrush, you're done, or you have you know, a color change, like you're going black to a light color. So you have to uh, kind of clean it out. So first, what we're gonna do is pull the lid off here and make sure we have a little bit of water. We're gonna grab our new water bottle right here and fill this up, I don't know, like, something like that just so we don't get a lot of like back spray and stuff okay so now we're gonna take this and this is why having a gooseneck water bottle is so important we're gonna sheet it up into here and kind of let gravity dump the water down into the pot here now you could use Tupperware or whatever um, that you have I actually on my station here I have just a little to-go kind of container from some Chinese food and stuff and that's all well and great but you know, I have a lot of space to work here. That might be atypical to some new users uh, when it comes to that. So these are a great little thing that you can, you know, and if you don't have space to blow your airbrush out, well, that's gonna be an issue too. So we're just gonna, step one, empty all of the paint inside of the pot out. Step two is to look for any dried paint or Klingons or particulates that are around the lip right here that you're gonna need this nice brush to kind of pull off or around in here because the paint will dry around your lip and you wanna be super careful that you're not having that release down into the pot and you're about to shoot it out into your inside. So you're actually putting the particulate into there. That is a big no-no and you wanna make sure that all of this is clear before you even start pushing and pulling water back and forth through this. That's a huge no-no. So now that we're clear here, and we don't have to worry about that because I didn't have that much paint, this is just a two ml cup. You can go up to five mls, but I feel like for miniature painting, you're right at home right here with two mls. So now on this particular model, it doesn't have a way to like kind of hold it and do back flushing. This is the Ultra, it's $90. It's a hardened steam back brush. Uh, it's great for the money, but this is the one thing I kind of had some constructive criticism on. I don't like it, so you have to have, take this little cap that they send you or you can buy separate, I forget which, I have a couple, it seems like I always get one with an airbrush. And you're just gonna plug up the end here, which is going to actually back flush or backflow water up into your reservoir. So it's actually gonna push all the water, the paint water up into here. So you're not pushing anything through, you're actually pushing it back up into here. So you're not gumming anything up yet. It's all coming up into here, which is kind of what you want. So you're gonna do that a couple of times. And then of course you can see, look at that black coming out of there. Now you can just make sure that you're getting all the rest, the residual paint up out of your insides. But there's gonna to come to a point where even that doesn't quite work. Oh, we ran out of, we ran out of air. We got a compressor ass kicked on. So once you finish rinsing out the reservoir and doing your back flushing, you'll get to a point where your water is actually pretty clear and right. But don't let that fool you. There's still paint and stuff inside of here. And there's only one other way to get to that and clean that out. Now you notice I've just been using water. If you are just using acrylic water-based paint, you shouldn't really have to use anything to get the paint broken up and pushed out and clean it, so to speak. Uh, sometimes paint dries in there. Sometimes particulates that are dry up here get down into here and you have to dig them out. And that's why, you know, having these things that we talked about earlier are good. But for the most part, you should not be passing chemicals through your airbrush, okay? Um, that's probably a falsehood that you need cleaner, you need specific airbrush cleaner. You don't. And a lot of times it'll erode the enamel. This is a chrome, or excuse me, this is a, uh, yes, this is a chrome plating here um, that's uh, pretty good quality as far as what I can tell. Actually, no, the Ultra is nickel. This is a nickel plating. 
Um, I haven't had any solvent issues, but you know, if you leave any solvent in here for any continued amount of time, it will be an issue. Now, with the PTFE or the Teflon seals, you can actually, it, it can handle solvents, don't get me wrong, the higher quality airbrushes can handle it. The Alwada does not have that, that Teflon um, uh, seals and packings and stuff up in here. It only has one in the air passage right here from what I saw on their schematic. So, you know, be a little bit more careful. They just have a lot of just rubber O-rings on their setup. So either way, I don't feel like you need, back in the day, I used to think, oh yeah, you gotta strip it down, you gotta strip it down. You don't have to do that. But what you do have to do here, and the reason I mentioned Teflon packing and uh, PTFE uh, O-rings and seals is having that higher quality components, which the Iwata Eclipse does in here, but does not have any in this area, I don't believe. Uh, is it's gonna allow you your your the inside of your airbrush to weather remember when I showed you this this is mildew like this is going through the water that's going through your airbrush you know if you don't have good components that can resist all of these things eventually you're gonna get guck you're gonna get junk all built up in here and one of the ways you get that is by pulling the needle back and not having it catch and in, in, in this packing right here and not having those good tolerances so we're gonna pull the needle back, and as you can see right here, we got really good tolerances except for right there, we got a little bit of dried paint on the tip, which you can't really complain about. But for the most part, we didn't see any liquid or anything come up into here. So with this being said, we can use some of these smaller uh, little needles to kind of, or little brushes that are softer to clean these delicate parts. Or if you just have some pluck foam, you can also do all that and clean all that off. But a lot of times I just use my finger and I put this off to the side. Now that we've got that up out of there, you're gonna notice that the, pa the paint is actually darker again. It's not clear because it's not clean. So we're gonna, again, flush all that out. Now this is probably an end of day process. You don't need to do this for every color change, this part at least. This is definitely an end of day type, type deal. And then we're just gonna back flush it again, just like we did and make it good to go right there do it a couple of times like we just showed you hey, literally wash rinse and repeat and then reseat your needle inside and you'll be good to go now at this point once you got your needle reseat reseated and all of your water is clear this is a good end of day procedure like i said you're good to go and you want to blow some water through this just to get out the very last of everything from your airbrush when you put the needle back in you can use a little bit of lube on it needle lube needle juice they sell all sorts of different things from different companies just you know check the check the specs on and make sure it's good for airbrushes i personally myself use just because i'm uh of course a habit i think there's some iwata stuff it is let's see iwata lube right here i haven't used this is about three years old obviously i haven't used a whole lot of it because and here's why if you're using chemicals and you're stripping down and you're doing all that super cleaning all the time yeah, you're gonna have some issues where you need to lube your airbrush, and that's kind of like a thing that you should, that's a practice you should not be in. But every six months or so, put a little lube on your needle right here when you're reseeding it, and that'll kind of refreshing things up up in here. Your brand new airbrushes are gonna already have a little bit of you know that lubricant in it, so you're not gonna have to super worry about it. But it's just something to be aware of that if you notice things kind of getting a little chalky and a little sticky and you can't find any paint in there well that's probably why so then we're going to reclose this bad boy right here kind of snap it down now you want to be careful because this isn't closed all the way but if you're doing a nice super blast uh you know you might want to seat it correctly otherwise you know i'm just going to pull the trigger and just kind of empty it into here as you can tell, it's pretty quiet. It's not gonna splash everywhere. And now we've just kind of cleared our airbrush. And we've got, you know, no paint or anything in there. And it's pretty much good to go at that point. So you can go and dump this and reseat everything and turn off your compressor because sometimes I leave paint in my airbrush and my compressor on for days. So don't be forgetful like me, or at least, you know, buy the higher end stuff. So if you are, it'll clean up pretty easy. So hopefully this helped you get an idea of how to actually clean your airbrush and some tools to help you do it, their actual intended use, and some gotchas to avoid uh, ruining your expensive piece of equipment right here. Again, this is the hardened Steamback Quick Release uh, valve, not the GMAC from 
Grex, which you could get that one. It all works the same. It's all the same sort of thing, but I definitely swear by this brand. But this one's lasted me for a long time as well, but this is what I recommend to everybody right there. So these, for the most part, are all the accessories you're gonna need to start out on your airbrushing adventure. Of course, you can get grand booths and LED lit, all the, all the bells and whistles as you go further in your adventure. But for right here, this is a great start. Also counting, you know, the little wash uh, bottle right here with the gooseneck kind of uh, nozzle. It's so good to use. I can't tell you. Uh, well, obviously, you know, I've been using one for a while, so we need to switch it out there. So if you have any questions, please drop them in the comments there. I'll do my best to answer them. But we are we have uh, man, we've been airbrushing for about eight years now. And let me tell you what I, I definitely wish I knew some of the stuff I know now. <laughs> that I knew back then because it would have saved me a lot of time and effort and heartache um, and perhaps wasted money as well. So that's it for this one. Make sure you check out all these great supplies over from our friends at Spray Gunner that sent this stuff to us for this review. Uh, of course, there is a link below so you can just kind of click on it and it helps us out some too as well because they kind of see, hey, Spiky Bits sent us some people. Yay. <laughs> Spiky Bits.